Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, why don't we greet each other by saying, you are a spiritual ambassador of Jesus Christ. Right? That is your spiritual identity. Right? That is your identity as a child of God. Right? You have given all the authority as a child of God. Right? So before we begin, let us do our confession of faith before God. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And today's title is Heal the Fundamentals. If you look at Mark chapter 3, verse 15, or actually 13, it says, Jesus called all of us because he wanted us. And God also gave us another reason why he has called us. It is to send us to the field, right? The reason why God has called you, called every one of you who are sitting here, because he wanted you, and not only that, because he wanted to send you out to the field as a spiritual ambassador. Because everyone is suffering from the spiritual problem, which is the fundamentals. So, and God has chosen you as the ones to heal them through the gospel. So through today's message, may you really discover the heavenly mandate, calling, and mission that God has given you as a child of God, right? That is your walk of faith, and that is worship, right? Finding the heavenly mandate that God has given to you. That's what we call only, finding your only within this ministry, right? What I can do for the sake of God, what I can do for the sake of the church, what I can do for this entire ministry, that is finding your only through the worship. May you have this grace and really thanksgiving, restored through today's worship. So before we jump right into the main content, briefly talk about the intro, what was proclaimed last week. The title was The Faith That Seizes the Opportunity. So looking back your entire week, was your week the week that really seizes the God-given opportunity, or did you just let it go? Like, how was it? Why don't we ask each other? Were you able to seize the God-given opportunity? Or you may ask, I don't even know what that opportunity is, then your spiritual eyes are getting blind, right, you know, right? If you really concentrate on the Word, if you really enjoy the mystery of prayer within your life, realistically, God will show you and what that opportunity is, right? And God has given us positions as assistant pastors, as elders, as deacons, and senior deaconesses, and presidents, and vice presidents, etc., right? And our positions are the opportunity for us to really experience God's power, right? So it's not a burden, but it's an opportunity for you to experience God's power, right? God's power, and the living work of God in your life. So if you are chosen as a deacon, if you are chosen as a president of this ministry, if you are chosen as team leaders or cell leaders of your group, right, God has given you tremendous blessing to experience the living work of God. Right? However, many people, whenever they are given a position, they think of it as a burden. Why? Because they are trying to carry it out with their own power. However, according to today's pulpit message, all you need is following the stream of the word. And God will do the rest. Right? All you have to do is make a resolution based on the absolute faith, then God will do the work. Right? That's all we need in our walk of faith. It's not about us doing something. It's not about us planning something. But it's about having this absolute faith in the triune God. Right? We have many remnants here worshiping together. Right? All God wants from you is faith. Remnants, can you repeat after me? Faith. Faith. Maja, bidum. Remnants, bidum. Maja. So many Christians consider their positions as burdens because they try to carry it out with their own power. However, according to last week's pulpit message, when God has given you this position, God also gave you the power to carry it out properly, right? 
this is the power that is different from the power that we, we receive from the world. Right? This is the power that comes from above. Right? So in order to receive this power in your walk of faith, right, you need to realistically enjoy the mystery of prayer within your life. And last week I said it is about the three concentrations. Right? In the morning, during the day, at night, you are enjoying this mystery of prayer so that you can receive the God-given power within your life. This is the privilege that God has given to all of us as a child of God. Right? As a child of God, if you really possess the gospel within your life, prayer is the greatest privilege. And only through prayer can you receive the God-given power. And with that power, we are carrying out your positions. With that power, we are carrying out all the programs, all the activities that we are about to do in the future. Right? That should be our standard, and that should be the standard of measurement whenever we do something, whenever we plan something in our ministry. Right? So that means we need to change everything into prayer. Whatever you hear, whatever you listen, whatever you think, or whatever you see, you need to be able to connect that to prayer. If not, you will be caught up with your own thoughts. Right? And last week, it said, and Pastor John said, that is biases and prejudices. Right? You being caught up with your own thoughts, Right? That is called your biases and prejudices. Right? Oh, I've, I've attended this church so many times. For so, such a long time, I know everything. Right? That kind of biases. Right? We need to discard your biases and prejudices because God wants to give you new grace each week and every single day. Right? Every single day. So Pastor Jung said, the decisive reason we lose hold of the God-given opportunity is because of our biases and our prejudices. Right? And these are what makes us nearsighted. Nearsighted. Only focusing on what is visible. Only focusing on what is appearing right in front of my eyes. That means you're not able to see what's going to happen in the spiritual reality because you're only focusing on the physical, the introductory things that is not eternal, that is not everlasting. Right? And the reason why many people fall into biases and prejudices is because they haven't experienced God's work. They haven't experienced God's answer in their walk of faith. That's why they have no choice but to hold on to their thoughts their own assertions, and their own opinions, right? So the fundamental root of these biases and prejudices is what? Me-centeredness. Everything is about me. So standard of judgment in everything is about me, how I feel, how I think, how I have ex experienced so far. So there is no room for God to work upon your life, right? Because you're caught up with your own thoughts, me-centeredness. So these biases and prejudices come from being me-centered, right? It's not about how God wants me to do, but it's about how I feel, how I want to do, how, how I want to plan out for this. Everything is about me. And as a result... As you already know from Genesis chapter 3, right, Adam and Eve was caught up with this me-centeredness, right? And deep inside of that, what comes is disbelief towards God, disbelief. The reason why you have no choice but to be me-centered is because you are not believing in the triune God, right? Whatever happens in your life, you only think of it as something that I should do something. There is no God's absolute sovereignty in your walk of faith. In other words, biases and prejudices are, arise because of a, my own selfish thought that doesn't acknowledge God's absolute sovereignty. I really pray that all of you acknowledge God's absolute sovereignty in every step that you take in your life. Right? Acknowledging God's absolute sovereignty. Right? And from time to time, 
the multi ethnics come to me and do the counseling, but the, there's first question that I always ask the person, is God alive? And he or she said yes. And I give them another question, does God make any mistakes? And they said no. Then this problem is not a problem, but this is God given opportunity for you to discover answers. Right? You need to really change your perspective. You need to really acknowledge and admit God's absolute sovereignty within your walk of faith. Right? That is your starting point. And if you become me-centered, right, that is the greatest channel through which God can attack you. Right? When you are being me-centered, that is when Satan claps. Right? You're doing great so that I can deceive you. I can attack you. And because you are caught up with your own biases and disbelief, right, your spiritual eyes will be dim. Spiritual eyes. That being said, you're only focusing on the facts, reality, and the truth, but you can see what's beyond. We call that the spiritual reality. We call that the spiritual facts. Because your spiritual eyes are dim, only the physical eyes are bright. So you, you only calculate what is seen, what is visible right in front of you. You can never calculate the things that God will give you when you restore this absolute faith in front of God. I want every single one of you to really restore this faith and see what's beyond the reality. See what's beyond your circumstances. See what is beyond your surroundings. Right? And the second thing, our senior pastor Jung mentioned from last week's pulpit message was about the, it was the power that is experienced when one believes. Right? God will give you power when you restore this faith in Jesus Christ. And what do you think is the greatest power that you and I have experienced so far? The greatest power that you and I experienced so far is the fact that our destiny has completely changed when we believe in Jesus Christ. Right, that is the greatest power. John chapter 5, verse 25. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you have crossed over from death to life. The greatest power of God that you and I have experienced is that your destiny, my destiny, has completely changed when you believe in Jesus Christ. Right? And Hebrew chapter 11 Verse 1, it says, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. In other words, seeing and believing in the spiritual reality, the spiritual world, is called faith. Right? You need to open these spiritual eyes. When you worship right now, right? when you hold on to the covenant, when you go deeper into prayer, that is when God sends his heavenly angels to you guys. That is when the forces of darkness are being broken down. That is when the kingdom of God is being established upon all the fields that are related to you guys. You must be able to open and see and believe in this spiritual reality. If not, this worship time is just it's a complete waste. However, I'm pretty sure that you guys have come to participate in this worship knowing that God's word is living and active. Right? And when you have this faith, right, you will absolutely experience the word fulfillment in your life. Right? And why is our faith so important? Because as we do our walk of faith, the only way we can please God is through our faith. It says, without faith, we can please God. Even if you give offerings like thousands of dollars, even if you do a lot of works at church, if you, do, if you lack faith, if you do not have faith in Jesus Christ, you cannot please God, right? So faith is the only method that you can make God happy. I want every single one of you to make God happy through your absolute faith in your walk of faith, right? right. And going into our main part, the body, right? And God has called us as the spiritual healers because we possess the gospel by God's grace. And people are suffering from the spiritual problems because they are separated from God. 
We know the reason, and we know the answer. We know the reason why people are suffering from many spiritual, mental diseases. It is because they are separated from God. They don't have God within themselves. Even if they have tons of money, luxurious cars or houses in their life, they lack one thing. That God is not there. They are separated from God. That's why they are suffering from the spiritual problems. And as the spiritual healers, we must heal their fundamentals. right? And there are many churches out there. And there are many believers out there. But what they're only focusing on is the physical thing. They only focus on their programs. They only focus on their activities that really have nothing to do with healing their spiritual problems. So many people come to church, but they're not able to find the absolute answer to their spiritual problems. But all, so that ultimately, they have no choice but to leave the church. Right? But I believe that our ministry, our church, our Yewan church, is the unique platform that only preaches the gospel. And you must make a resolution that whoever I meet in our life, I'm going to save that person with only the gospel. Right? Think about it. We saw a short video clip towards the end of worship, right? It was about Jim Elliott, right? He made a resolution, right? right? To go to, it was Ecuador or something, right? And he was martyred there. However, his wife did not consider it as a loss, right? It was his dream come true because he confessed that discarding what is not eternal, right? For the sake of gaining and obtaining what is eternal is not foolish, right? I want you to really discard what is fleeting, what is physical, and what is temporary for the sake of receiving what is eternal. That is the blessing of the throne. That is the power of the triune God that comes upon you when you are successful in worship by holding on to the accurate covenant, right? So you have to make a resolution. I am going to be a spiritual healer. I am going to be a spiritual ambassador who will be sent out to the field and heal their fundamentals with only the gospel. It's not about your, the ability to persuade others, but it's about your faith and your grace that you are within Jesus Christ. Right? Then, how can we heal one's fundamentals? In other words, how can we heal one's spiritual problems? It is only by proclaiming and relaying the true, correct gospel. There is no other way. Because Acts chapter 4, 12, their salvation is found in no one else. Right? Salvation can only be found in Jesus Christ. That's why in order to heal one's fundamentals, their spiritual problems is only through proclaiming the true gospel. And I believe that you guys are the ones with the true gospel. Right? And I'll, I'm pretty sure that you are like part of the 10,000 disciples that our senior pastor Jung is envisioning right now. Right? 10,000 disciples with the correct gospel. And I'm pretty sure that all of you are part of those 10,000 disciples. Why? Because you have, you've heard of this correct gospel every single week through the main service right? and through this YM service. So all you have to do is enjoy it 24 Right? When you enjoy Christ 24, God has no choice but to attach people who need this gospel desperately. Right? So the first thing that you need to know is you should be able to tell them, tell the people who are suffering from the spiritual problems why Jesus Christ is needed. Necessity of Jesus Christ. You should tell them why Jesus Christ is needed in their life. In today's passage, it is recorded that the, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Right? God of this age. Who is that? That is Satan. That is the, the devil. Right? And if you look at John chapter 16, verse 11, right, the Bible describes Satan as the prince of this world. Right? He is actually in charge of this world. Also in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, he is also described as the ruler of the kingdom of the air. 
right? This world that we are living in, it is controlled by Satan because he is the ruler of the kingdom of the air, right? You should be able to see this spiritual reality. Not only that, John chapter 8, verse 44, the Bible says, actually, Jesus said, when you are separated from God, you or father is the devil, and he is the father of lies. He's the father of lies. And every person who is separated from God is seized by the power of Satan, right? And we can see many evidences that Satan is the ruler He's the prince. He's the God of this age. That's why if you are separate from God, because we are spiritual beings, we are, we are controlled by either of the two, either by the Holy Spirit or the evil spirit. So as soon as we are separate from God, the Holy Spirit left us, and from that point on, the evil spirit started to control over our entire life. And this is the reason why everyone who is without God is being controlled and seized and manipulated by Satan. Right? And people cannot escape from this power with their own will, with their own power. But they have no choice but to suffer within continuous disasters and curses. We call that the fundamental problem. No matter how successful you are, no matter how educated you are, no matter how much money you have, if you are away from God, this is your spiritual address. You are within the three curses that no one can resolve with their own power. It is the power of Satan, power of sin, and the power of hell. No one can escape from this. Right? And because God knows that we can resolve this on our own, God promised that I will send the Messiah. And that promised Messiah has come, and that name is Jesus. And the reason why Jesus came to this earth is to fulfill the offices of Christ. That's why we believe Jesus as the Christ, right? And 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Because we can defeat the power of Satan, God sent Christ who could de defeat the power of Satan. Right? That's why only through Jesus Christ can we heal one spiritual problem. Right? Then, what is the true answer that is given to the one whose fundamentals are healed? The true answers. What is the true answer? It is that your life is without any problems? Is that, is that the true answer that you are seeking as a child of God? No, there are more problems when you become a child of God, right? All of your problems are not resolved as soon as you become a child of God, right? Then what is the true answer, right, that is given to the one whose fundamentals are healed? That is, the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ is shown upon you, right? The light of Christ being shown upon you, that is the greatest answer. Because, if you're away from God, if you're separate from God, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. You won't be able to receive this light if you belong to Satan. However, if you really accept Jesus Christ into your heart, this light of Christ is, is being shown upon you. Right? And from that point on, the image of God that is within you, that has been distorted, that has been destroyed, will be restored when this light is shown upon you. This light. And when this light is shown upon you, according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, Jesus, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Right? When this light is shown upon you, you are liberated from the dominion of darkness. But you're brought into the kingdom of of God, right? That's what happened. That is the greatest answer that you can receive. That God is with me. I belong to the kingdom of God, right? My background is the kingdom of God. That is the greatest answer that you and I can enjoy as a child of God, right? And when does the image of God, when is this 
image of God is restored. When? And as I mentioned before, John chapter 1 verse 12. When you believe and accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And even to this passage, Jesus, who is the image of God. So when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, the image of God that has been distorted, that has been destroyed, will be restored. Right? When you believe in Jesus Christ. And the greatest answer, the true answer is that Matthew chapter 28. 18 to 20, the resurrected Christ promised that I will be with you to the ends of the earth. Right? There are many parents who are sitting here, right? You can never be with your children forever. Right? You and I are still young, but at some point in your life, you and I have to stand before God. Right? That means there is no exception in the fact that we have to face death at some point in our lives. However, the resurrected Christ says, I will be with you to the ends of the earth. With nothing? No. With all the authority of heaven and the earth. Right? That is the true answer that you and I can enjoy. That's why even if you are in the field of nobody, even if you are in the field of nothing, right? it seems like there's no one who can help me, it's going to be fine. Because Jesus Christ is with you through the Holy Spirit. Right? And he has given you all the authority of heavens and the earth. Right? So there is no reason for you to worry. And what is the true answer? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Right? The answer of all answers is that Christ becomes the Lord. The Christ becomes the master of your life. Because I have been crucified. Myself, who was completely dead, under the power of Satan, sin, and hell, has been crucified on the cross. And now Christ lives inside of me. Right? The reason I live in my body is for the sake of Jesus Christ. Right? That should become your goal of your life. Right? You're not living your life for the sake of fulfilling your own will, your own plans. But you're living your life for the sake of Jesus Christ. Right? Your purpose of your life right? must be changed. So Christ being the center, Christ being the master of your life is the true answer that you and I can receive. Right? So the triune God being with you and becoming the master of your life is the true answer. Right? I want you to really change your perspective regarding the true answer in your life. It's not about earning a lot of money. It's not about getting a good car. But it's about that God is with us. Right? Why is God being with us is the greatest answer? Because all problems began when we are separated from God. That's why God being with us is the greatest answer that you and I can receive as a child of God. Then, what is the true mission? That you and I must carry out. If you look at verse 5 today, in today's passage, Paul says, we do not preach ourselves, right? The reason why I'm standing here is not preach about myself, right? But Jesus Christ as our Lord, right? That should become our mission. Our sole mission is to proclaim that Jesus is the Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not about we do something. It's not about you do something. But it's about preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is our true mission. That's why Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 2, right? God says, arise and shine, for the glory of God has already come upon you. Right? When you believe in Jesus Christ, this glory of the Lord, this light of Jesus Christ has already come upon you. All you have to do is arise and shine, right? That is your mission. The reason why you are in your workplace is to shine the light of Christ. The reason why you're living in Korea is not to earn money, not to support your family, but to shine the light of Christ. Right? The reason why God has allowed you to understand the true gospel is for you to be commissioned back to your country and shine this light of Jesus Christ. Right? That is the only reason God has called you. And in Isaiah chapter 62, verses 6 to 12, 
God says, I have posted watchmen on your walls. That's why, because you and I possess the light of Christ, you guys are the watchmen. You guys are the watchmen of your families. You guys are the watchmen of your workplaces. And you guys are the watchmen of the 237 nations. Right? And lastly, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, Peter said, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God who will shine this wonderful light of Jesus Christ. Right? That is your true identity. Right? That's what it means that you are a spiritual ambassador of Jesus Christ. The, the reason you are being sent to the field is to shine this marvelous, this wonderful light of Jesus Christ that can bring you out of darkness, right? And make you into a child of God. But that is your true mission. And as a conclusion, once you heal people's fundamentals, right? What happens to you is that you will be able to see problems, not as the problems, but as the answers that God gives you, right? You must open these eyes to see the problems as the answers. Why? I mentioned this several times. If there is a problem, real problem, then there must be a real answer. Every single time. Do not fall into the, your problems, but stay in the line of answers. Because God has prepared all the answers for you through the pulpit message. Whenever you're faced with the problems, all you have to do is refer back to the pulpit message. What did God say about this through the word? Then God will exactly give you the answer. Right? And from this point on, when you find the answer through the word, your spiritual state will be revived. Spiritual state. Before, when problems arise, you tend to rely on people. You tend to seek out answers through the methods of the world, but as you find the answer through the word, your spiritual state will be grown, will be changed. And also, whenever you have conflicts with people, right, that is the time for you to renew yourself. Right? Time of renewal. Changing yourself, enlarging your vessel, right? So that means your spiritual vessel will be enlarged because through conflicts, when you renew yourself, you will be able to embrace everyone. You will, you should, you will be able to understand every situation and you can transcend every kind of people. That means your spiritual vessel will be enlarged, right? I want you to really enlarge your spiritual vessel so that you can embrace the entire 237 nations and 5,000 tribes, right? That is our goal. And lastly, whenever you're faced with the crisis, remnants, whenever you're faced with the crisis, do you have to run away? Remnants, when you're faced with the crisis, do you have to run away? What do you do? How do you fight? How do you fight? Come on. How do you fight? How do you fight? How will you fight? Remnants, whenever you are faced with crisis, you should consider it as an opportunity. For you to experience God's power. So, whenever you are faced with crisis, you should consider it as the God-given opportunity for your spiritual state will be growth. Spiritual growth. Christ. So as you leave your walk of faith, if you resort to people, if you try to find comfort from people, your spiritual growth will be halted. However, if you continue to experience God's power within any kinds of situations, your spiritual growth will continue to enlarge, will continue to grow. Right? So I want you to really open these eyes starting this week, right? You need to make a resolution. No matter what happens, I will consider it as an answer, 
right? When you make that resolution, God will start working upon your life, right? May you really be the ones, the spiritual healers, the spiritual ambassadors who will heal one's fundamentals through only the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may we be equipped with the gospel and proclaim it to the others as a spiritual ambassador of Jesus Christ. May we take the courageous challenge to carry out the heavenly mandate, the calling, and the mission that God has given to us. And help us enjoy the mystery of prayer in our lives so that we can find the God-given answers within every problem and find renewal within every conflict and find the God-given opportunity in every crisis that we face. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.